Hey guys, welcome to Chat with KST. I'm your girl K, and let's first and foremost start off by saying Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year! Happy New Year to you guys! All right, today, of course, is January 1st, 2024, the first day of the new year, and we're going to be starting out pretty strong this year with a full show. Now, what do I mean by full show? It's where we sit down and we discuss a series of topics that's going on in media, and we just kind of dissect them, talk about them, chillax, you grab your popcorn, you grab your chips, and we just kind of mac out and enjoy the podcast, right? Now, if you're looking for the visuals of the podcast, the visuals can be found on YouTube. You get to see me, you get to see the topics, you get to see everything else. But if you're really not interested in the visuals and you just want to pop something in your ear to listen to, you can, of course, hop over to Spotify or Apple Podcasts where you can you do have that option available to just listen to the podcast. Now, we do normally start off our podcast, our full shows, with a quote of the day. And today's quote of the day does not have an actual author, but it is on Pinterest. And it says, you owe yourself the love that you so freely give to other people people. So sometimes it is easy for us to love other people, love them down, love them unconditionally. But then when it comes to ourselves, we get become so judgmental. We become so, um, what would be an antonym to compassion? We become so mean to ourselves and not compassionate and show us, we don't show ourselves any grace. So It's about this year, 2024, showing ourselves that compassion, showing ourselves that grace, showing ourselves that love and that forgiveness that we so freely give to everyone when they need it, right? But anyway, enough of the chitty chat stuff from the introduction. Let's jump into these topics. So of course, today is January 1st. First, and according to Spiritual World, starting January 1st, 2024, when pulled over, California police can no longer ask drivers, do you know why I pulled you over? Now, first and foremost, I need this to be in every single state because, sir or ma'am, if you pulled me over, shouldn't you be telling me why you pulled me over? Why are you using reverse psychology to ask me why I think you pulled me over? And then when I start to, or when people start to get sarcastic now, then that ruffles your feathers. But according to Spiritual World, beginning January the 24th, officers will be required to state the purpose of the traffic stop before asking any questions, any other questions, rather than starting with that particular question. Similarly, this applies to any steps carried out on a pedestrian pedestrian. So this is not just for drivers in California. This is also for the pedestrians. Honestly, I feel like this is good. I feel like um, all states do need to implement this because I do feel like, yes, um, the police officers, they do have an authority over us, right? They do. They are and have taken this voucher to protect lives and to save lives. So the authorities already understood. There's no reason why we need to do the piston contest when I do do something wrong. Just tell me what I did wrong and give me issue the consequences and I'll deal with the repercussions when that time come. But when we have to do this piston contest, it turns too bad for all parties involved. But yeah, shout out to Callie for doing that. You know, Callie be making strides um, when they feel like it. Um, so let's move on. Okay. So now we have Dr. Umar. And according to Spiritual World, Dr. Umar spoke last night about Jonathan Major's case. And in air quotes, they stated he got charged because the way he responded to the white woman's assault was not appropriate. So kind of just to kind of jump into the story of Jonathan Majors, he had an incident, a domestic incident with a white woman, and he was charged for domestic violence and all of these different things. And he claims that she was violent to him. She claims um, he was violent to her. And then he was found guilty, but he was found guilty on some on something that was didn't seem as bad as it was supposed to be. 
But let's hear what Dr. Umar has to say, because I think he has more uh, on the case than I would. And the only person benefiting from the black man going professional is the white female. Y'all saw what they did to Jonathan Majors? He got into a tugging match with this ugly white female. No shape at all. Not a curve in the center. And they admitted that she attacked him. But he got charged because the way he responded to the white woman's assault was not appropriate. He got his career destroyed because he didn't respond to an attack from a white woman appropriately. Even though there's a video of him running down the street. Run, nigga, run! And do you know why she took him to court? Because what a lot of black men don't understand about these racist white females, y'all be. Because they're just as racist as the white men. The only difference is the white female employs a psychological technique. Before he finishes, I do want to just clarify um, some things that I am thinking as he is saying it. If I remember correctly, she was the one who brought the charges against Jonathan Majors that he attacked her. And then it came out that she actually attacked him first. So people were thinking that he was going to be um, free to go. But his career by then was already ruined. Right. Because a lot of things were taken away from him. And then in addition to that, he was still found guilty. Right. So the thing is. um, it is in a way messed up what happened with Jonathan Majors. I'm not really a big fan of Jonathan Majors and I'm not really a big fan of the films that he did start in, but to hear his story and how things can turn bad for a black man so quickly, it it kind of sucks, right? Now, I'm not someone that tolerates abuse across the border, whether it's a black woman or a white woman, an Asian woman, a Spanish woman. I feel like men you should always know how to respond to any woman's attack. But had she been a black woman who made these outcries and then it it was later found out that the black woman was the aggressor in the situation, would he have experienced the backlash that he got? And I think that's where Dr. Umar is trying to go and say with the white supremacy. So now let's go into where he starts to talk about the psychological um, racism that white women use on black men. See, the white woman's job in the black community is to get the black man to drop all of his psychological defenses against racism. Her job is to disarm your dumb ass. See, if she didn't psychologically disarm Jonathan Majors, he would have never been the black. See how this goes? The white woman convinces the black man, I'm not like all the others. (laughs) In the minute you step out of line, she yanked your slave check. See, that white woman wanted to show Jonathan Majors, you might be the biggest up and coming black actor, but I'm a white woman in America. I can destroy you overnight. And this is why I tell you, Negroes, you might be laying on top of her, but she's still in control of you. And that's what he had to say. And I don't like, like I said, um, when Dr. Umar do do these think pieces and he does open us up to where he 
how, how he analyzes the situations, it does call for you to really be like, hey, like this man, he's really going somewhere with it, right? And I do feel like in some weird way, um, there is racism that exists. And it exists so much so that we, we call them what Karens, but a Karen or someone, not even a Karen, a white woman or a Caucasian woman could say something. And when she says something, it's valued, it's respected, it's understood. But then when a black woman says it, then it's demeaned, right? Because let's say, like to go back to what I was saying, if it was a black woman who would have said, hey, he did something to me, and then they later found out that she was the aggressor, her whole case would have been dismissed, right? Because then she would have been looked at as a liar, right? Someone who's out to cry for help, someone who, like, not cry for help, but somebody who's, who is trying to, like, do something negative, right? But then when a white one, white woman does it, then it's like, oh, well, you know, he shouldn't have responded to the attack that way, whether she did it or not. You know what I mean? And it, it does suck that his career is now ruined and has now been ruined because of this situation. However, we as people just need to learn from these situations and know how to navigate Hollywood and not just Hollywood, society as a whole, being African-American and knowing how to respond to things that won't land you in situations like this, right? So if it does mean that you need to increase your spirit of, spirit of discernment and stay away from certain things, then that's what you should do, right? But anyway, let's move on from Dr. Umar. And I came across this as well on Spiritual Word, where they says, where it says, having your own bread as a female is so mandatory. Absolutely. Having your own money is mandatory. I feel like as women, we like our hair done, we like our nails done, we like everything done. Um, we want our bills paid, we want all these different things paid. So we should be able to do it so that we don't have to succumb to someone else's BS in order to enjoy the things that we like to enjoy in life. We don't have to have someone tower over us in order to enjoy the things that we like to enjoy, right? But anyway, that's just my opinion on that. Now, this here is a celebration post to Gunna, right? Now, Gunna rap career has been popping since day one to me. Gunna has been one of those rappers that you know he exists. His music is good. He's not really in the limelight and too cloudy, 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 cloudy. He's just really known for his raps and the music that he puts out. Like Gunna is not somebody that you see him in some mix up and some drama on some gossip. No, is Gunna is known for his music. I remember like listening to Gunna back in the day and stuff like that. So when this whole drama with um, Thugga Thugga came out, right, Young Thug, and him and him being mixed up, I thought it was going to actually ruin his career. But let me tell you something. When God says your enemies shall be your footstool, that is what he says. When God says you shall be the, the head and not the tail, that's what it is. Because look at what Gunna has done. According to the spiritual world, Gunna's fuck you mean was the most streamed the most streamed rap song in the U in the US this year with over 400 million streams and that song is still running rampant on TikTok with the Grinch face on it people are still listening to it in their cars driving 120 doing the most to this song because the song is just that good. And what I mean when I say um, God surely will make your enemies your footstool is because almost everybody in the industry wanted to count Gunna out a couple months ago. And he put out his album and then he put out this amazing song and it's just like he's still doing what he's supposed to do. So congratulations to Gunna. Like you're a fire ass rapper. And I think it's, 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 it's proven that you did it by yourself. You didn't need, you didn't need help from everybody else, right? You were able to do it by yourself. So shout out to Gunna on this. Congrats to him. I really, really enjoy the song. Um, speaking of rappers, we have a video here of Little Baby and Little Baby 
was driving his fancy, fancy car. And I guess someone was in his way and he was like, get out of my way. But let me play the clip for those of you who was watching, who are watching it on YouTube. Man, look at, man, look at baby, man. Hey, Rollo, out. What up, man? Oh, he took Mario. up. <laughs> And the person says, the person's comments were first time meeting baby. So basically, let me describe it for those of you who are listening. He's driving. And as he's driving, he realizes that it's little baby. So he's blowing little baby. But little baby's fanning him off like, hurry up, man. Like, like, because little baby's in the middle of the road. So um, it says, nigga so rude. It, <laughs> nigga so rude first time meeting baby money bag yo could never little baby hash, i'm little baby hashtag following hashtag barba hashtag mention the hashtag viral video hashtag viral so the fan wasn't um too excited about the the interaction with baby but i do feel like you guys have to recognize right in a way that even though we do love these celebrities and we love what they do we love the music that they put out we love what they stand for we love whether it's you love what they stand for or their music whatever these celebrities are famous for we have to realize that they're regular degla ass people regular degla ass people like dude if you in the middle of the way move please i'm trying to go somewhere get out of my way and it doesn't have to be in a mean way that i like i hate you or whatever it's just like a get out of the way sir like move so i feel like sometimes we do have to um allow celebrities like like we said in the beginning with, with that quote that we should be allowing ourselves some grace we should also be allowing these celebrities some grace and not just quickly jump down their throats like oh my god he's so mean not what i expected meeting him for my first time and everything like that because maybe that's just a 10 second interaction throughout his 23 hours and 50 minute day where the for the next 23 hours and 50 minutes he 50 minutes and um 60 seconds he's like the best person ever and 50 seconds i hope i did that math right but i probably didn't but basically for the next 23 hours and change that he has out the day he's probably the nicest person on the planet but he had that one bad interaction with you so you can't take a five second ten second interaction with someone and just establish their whole character that way right i don't think little baby is mean because i've seen more positive things as it relates to his character and the things that he do rather than negative things so just probably a bad experience for this fan and you know what at the end of the day shit happens but anyway let's move on according to the shade room paula abdul sues american idol and so you think you can dance producer Nigel Lithgow for sexual assault. And I'm going to do I'm going to read you the write up from the shade room and I just felt like I'm always in I'm always talking about the African American community. So when I did come across this case because I am familiar with Paula Abdul, I wanted to just kind of speak on her um her situation here. So I'm not completely familiar with the details of her story, so let's jump into the write up so that we can get caught up with what this lawsuit is all about. Right. So Paula Abdul filed a lawsuit against Nigel, 19 year entertainment and Fremont Media North America for sexual assault and battery, sexual har harassment, gender violence and negligence on Friday. Today's what? Monday. So she did this on Friday. According to TMZ, Paula claims that the American Idol and hashtag s-y-t-y-c-d producer sexually assaulted her multiple times while she was judge on both shows in documents obtained by the outlet paula details the first incident where she claims she and nigel got on an elevator at their hotel and once the doors closed she sh he shoved her against the wall, grabbed her genitals and her private parts, because I don't want to say anything because we do have um, YouTube here up and running, and began shoving his tongue down her throat. Okay, sir. 
That's how you're giving it up? What do you think this is? Aren't you at work? But let me continue. On a second occasion, you would think he would only do it once. Paula claims that Nigel forced himself on top of her while she was sitting on his couch and attempted to kiss her while proclaiming that they would make an excellent power couple. She says that she's even witnessed him sexually assault one of her assistant. Paula explains in the suit that she has decided to come forward now due to California's sexual sexual uh, sec, uh, California sexual abuse and cover up um, accountability act, which extends the statute of limitations for civil actions, alleging sexual assault. Okay. 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 So um, if she's saying that the reason why she's coming forward now is because they did extend the statute of limitations, maybe when the statute of statute of limitations ran out on it before. And this is just me thinking based on what I just read. Maybe when the statute of limitations ran out before, she may have given up on it. But now that she does have the opportunity to come forward, she's like, hey, you know what? Well, let me come forward. Um, my take on this is a lot of people have been saying a lot, right? Because we even have um Jermaine Jackson being sued. We have now um Mr. Nigel being sued. So I feel like a lot of people are going to start getting sued. My question to these young women are always like, why don't we speak up? I get it. It's it's very traumatic to go through certain things, but and let me not say but because they do say that when you do say but it negates what you said before. So I understand that there is the trauma around being there with these men and them allegedly abusing you guys. However, what about the mental and the psycho, like the psychological effects of you now witnessing the power of this man grow, knowing the assholes that they are? You know what I mean? And then I get it. You guys do now suddenly have a voice to speak about it. But then you're going to also have fans um, who don't really kind of care in a way because sometimes these things they date back to years and 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 years ago and people are like well if you didn't speak about it then then why are we speaking about it now right but I get it it's not about I also get the fact that these different um, lawsuits it's not about the fans it's about exposing what happened and the victim getting their just due my thing is, I would just like for us to not only open the gateway for sexual assault victims to be bold enough to speak out and speak out in a way where they feel as though they will be believed. However, speak out early enough to the point where this person or these people who are in certain positions aren't able to build such a persona that it'll be hard for you to believe the victim if you guys know what I'm saying right like say stuff right when it happens get the the um the R kit right when it happens do these things right when it happens so that we can nip it in the bud because then it begs to question, right? Why you sat there? Why? And, and and I'm not victim blaming, but I do have questions, right? If someone as sexually assaulted you, why did you continue to work side by side with this person? Weren't you scared of another attack? What if this person actually continued to do violent, vile things to you? Were you going to sit there and take it? And then it's like, was the opportunity greater than your trauma? And that it's so many different things that it's like you kind of have to, as the victim, be ready to uh, to um answer these questions because honestly, that's what their attorneys are going to put up 
when if if they do go to trial, they're gonna say, okay, well, why did you not speak on it before? What what was it? Was it about money? So is it about money now, or was it about money then? And these are things that we that you guys, I said we. These are things that you guys, as um, sexual assault victims, that things happened to you in the '90s, 2000s, and all of this, taking over for the '90s and the 2000s, but these things that happened to you guys back then are going to have to explain. And it's unfortunate that you're going to have to sit in front of a jury and have these things. Well, however they decide to do it as a bench trial or whatever, I don't know how they're going to do it, but, um, but this is, these are things that you're going to have to answer if they choose to not just settle outright. You know what I mean? But, um, and these are questions that will be illuminating in the back of people's head heads when you guys do wait so long to, collect on something that you kind of really do deserve right because if you are around an asshole he needs to be moved away and jailed right r kelly you see him there yeah but anyway um good luck to this woman um i wish her all the best and i just wish the truth about the situation and about these idiots do come out nigel um this is your alleged uh lawsuit where you're you're no sorry this is your lawsuit where you're an alleged sexual assault attacker and um i hope that you've learned your lesson if this really did happen and i'm gonna move on okay so let's move on and away from all of those um uh, those topics because those topics for me sometimes I have to be honest topics of the r word topics of assault especially sexual it really does like rub me the wrong way but this one is about sexual harassment but it's about something that isn't as deep so I'm able to talk about it but if something do if I do decide that I want to move on from a topic it's because I I just I'm not built enough to really dive deep too much into such certain topics. Like I just have to be like, all right, you know what? I'm going to move on. Cause not that it triggers me, but it kind of just doesn't sit right with me in certain way, shape or form. But anyway, let's move on to Joe Budden versus Rory. Now, I don't know what's going on with Rory and Joe, but something is going on. Like you guys haven't been podcasters since how long? Why are you guys still speaking? Why are you guys still speaking on each other? Um, why are we still wishing for the downfall of another podcast? Why don't we just move on and let the numbers and let the audience tell us who's the best and move on with that? And that's what I kind of have to say so far about this situation. But according to its own site, the Joe Budden, Joe Budden's former podcast mate, Rory, claims Joe allegedly settled a sexual harassment lawsuit that reportedly happened on camera. So remember when Rory and Maul um, had separated the podcast and then there was the black girl who said she felt uncomfortable when Joe was talking to her? Well, I guess he settled that lawsuit, right? But let's listen to the actual clip. Joe was on that space. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, Joe was on that space yesterday. Joe was on the, the spaces this whole weekend saying mm -hmm. that this is kind of indicative of an amateur op operation, this situation. And I the think punch. He, yeah, the punch. And he's trying to curate mm -hmm. it in such a way that it's a reflection of how, to me, your pod might be failing. This is what I observe. I'm not saying mm -hmm. I agree. And I think it's funny how he's trying to curate that narrative. And he even said, not to, just to add on, he said that he hopes a lawsuit happens to bring the end of y'all pod. I, think, I don't know if you caught that, Rory, but he said that. I was kind I of saw, I, saw, so. I saw the clip and I, I saw him laughing about lawsuit coming, this and that. Uh, if you want to laugh about fake lawsuits that don't exist, maybe you should address the real lawsuit that you settled on for sexual harassment on camera. Mm. Oh, shit. Okay. All right. Oh it's, oh, it's quiet now. Okay, all right. No, yeah. right. Joe was on this. I mean, real quick, right, Rory? Because Rory likes to think like he, and it, it kind of sucks that he is a white boy, right? It sucks that he is a white man because I am getting a little bit annoyed with him. Like, I'm annoyed with you, Rory, because you're always saying some slick shit about Joe. And in a way, 
let me pull it back a little bit. I understand that Joe may have said certain things about um, your podcast or whatever. I don't even know what punch you guys are talking about. I don't even want to get into the specifics about that. However, Rory, you didn't eat when you said something about a sexual harassment case that he settled because honestly, we already knew the sexual harassment case was there when she tag teamed with you guys to try to take Joe Button down. Joe Button podcast is a lot more successful with you guys not there. I may not watch him as much, but that's due to personal reasons and me having my own um, platform and just kind of wanting to create content instead of consume content, right? But we can't, people can't watch your podcast because your podcast is boring. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to be rude or mean, but at the end of the day, focus there. You always focus, Rory, on, and I'm not even talking to Maul right now. I'm talking to Rory. He always focuses on trying to have this pissing contest with Joe Budden. And it's just like, come on, Joe is the star. Relax. Relax. You have all of this animosity and all this, all of this extra shit for what? And like I said, it does suck that I think he's a white boy. I don't know if he's black, but it, he looks white to me. It does suck that he is a white boy because then it's like, what what's really going on over there? What's really going on? You know what I mean? And if he's black, then I don't know. But he looks he he looks Caucasian to me. Sorry, I was looking at my phone. I got some a couple notifications, but I feel like Rory just be pissing me off sometimes, man. Every time, every single time, Joe, like in Jamaica, was the every time, like now that the saying is missing me, but every time Joe does something, you dare to pick it up. Every time Joe says something, you dare to pick it up. Why can't Joe? Why can't you be? for just a minute, like you hear something and you say, I'm not going to respond to it because I'm a bigger person, right? Because sometimes too, you are re to unnecessary shit. And then you think that you eat in, when you res- in your response and we're like, well, we already knew that. We already knew about it. Now you're telling us that it's settled. Okay, well, thank God for that, you know? But anyway, off of the podcasters, off of the podcaster introducing so the other day right um yay kanye aka yay he did write uh an apology to the jewish community for his anti-semitic comments and shortly after we were introduced to his new yeezys let me just kind of show those of you who are watching this on youtube Yeezy Pods, available now at Yeezy.com. Introducing Yeezy Pods, available now at Yeezy.com. Don't get me wrong. These Yeezys, these Yeezy Pods, they look nice. Now, I haven't really seen... um, how much these things are actually worth and i know they are going to be worth a lot of freaking money but it does beg to question kanye yay was the apology really genuine because i was out here advocating for you was it uh, was it genuine because now we see you advertising this right so was it or wasn't it not But then again, you're Kanye and the shoes are really nice and you did apologize. And you know what? I did feel the apology was genuine. I just feel like you have to do things strategically, right? You have to, if you're going to want to promote this, apologize earlier on and then come out with this. Don't just come out with this a couple days after or show this a couple days after the apology, right? But anyway, that is Kanye for you, and I don't think he's ever going to change. All right, so let's see what's going on. Okay, according to the Neighborhood Talk, 
wait, what? Kevin Gates asked Finesse two times if he can put his legs in the air. So we have Kevin Gates and we have Finesse two times. Let's see what's going on between the two gentlemen. I love you. You love me? I love you too, bro. You know, yeah, I got a question. Talk to you. Me. Ever say, yeah. Hey, you'll do me a favor if you do. Talk to you. Put my feet now, please. Put your feet. If I felt like something was wrong with you, I would. Put my feet there, man. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna go for that ride. But guess hey, what? That's all I ask of you. Know? you. Yeah. Hold me accountable. You one of them one for sure. I try. Uh, you, you're doing a damn good but job. Yeah, top for the morning, beloved. Man, what's up, bro? I ain't nothing. I just miss you. I'm on my way to Vegas, man. Mm -hmm. I just miss you. When I'm gonna see your face, when I'm gonna you know, see your body. When I put you and our other brother in the same room, hey, that's your brother. Hey, what's up? Yeah, do it. Yeah, yeah. They do it. They do it. I love you. You love me. I love you too, bro. You know. Hey, that. I got a question. Talk to me. You ever say, hey, hey, you'll do me a favor if you do. Talk to me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I just need to to, to re listen. No, me have to cock my ears and listen to what I must say again because sometimes minute you're good, minute you're good. So make me listen good to where them two grown ass man pan Instagram live at talk about so just all on make me listen to it good. Listen, Gordon. Yo, put my feet now, please. Put your feet. If I felt like something was wrong with you, I would. Put my Why you would I want a man put your foot in the ear? And understand, say, if you are a bisex bisexual or a gay or a gay person, a gay man or something, um, I understand. But if you are proclaiming to be a heterosexual man, why would you want someone to put your foot in the ear? What is the new trend? What is the new abbey? What is going on in these streets that I don't know about? And again, guys, this is not homophobia for any one of who any of you guys who are listening that is a part of the LGBTQIA community. I just want to know because Finesse two times has always proclaimed to be someone that has live live a polygamous um, lifestyle with multiple women, right? Kevin Gates has also um been someone who hold on, sorry, I was getting a call, but I can't answer now. Um Kevin Gates has always been someone who proclaims to be in into women. And yes, the Jamaican in me have to come out because what is going on in Jamaica? We don't do that. Where two men cock up them legs and, and anything, uh, unless you are a part of the LGBTQIA community. So I'm confused. Is this the coming out of um the two? But let's continue to listen. I feel dead, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're gonna go for that ride. But guess hey, what? That's all I ask of you. Yeah. Hold me accountable. You one of them one for sure. I try. Uh, you, you're doing a damn good but job. Top for the morning, beloved. Man, what's up, bro? I ain't nothing. I just miss you. The I miss you part, that part is perfectly fine. I feel like as a man, you can have um a friend and when you have that friend and you haven't seen that friend in a while you can say oh yeah i love you bro i'll miss you or whatever that portion is fine and this segment this part of the, this segment of the show will be done in my jamaican accent because i want to understand it and i don't understand it yet i'll know so my quest continue listen to what i must say i'm on my way to vegas man so Finesse set him on his way to Vegas. Okay, okay, Finesse, two times. Mm -hmm. I just miss you. When I'm gonna see your face, when I'm gonna you know, see your body. When I put you in our other So hold on, Finesse two times. Why you want to see another man's body? And then it's the response from Kevin Gates. No. Let's hear Kevin Gates' response. Brother in the same room. Hey, that's your brother. When I put you in the same room with your brother. Hey, what's up? They do it. They do it. I love you. You know what? I don't understand it. But you know what? Me, 
Men I know. Like, my understand, all right, my understand said certain things. And let me not speak in Jamaican because if I speak in Jamaican, um, the point may be missed by someone who is a part of the LGBTQIA community who will take my commentary as homophobic. And I don't want anyone to do that. What I am saying is, um, I haven't personally witnessed certain conversations between two heterosexual men where they're saying, I want to see your body and put legs in ear. I feel like there are certain boundaries, like even with us women, right? If I am a heterosexual woman, I'm not saying, hey, girl, I can't wait to see your cha-chas or I can't wait to see your body. Like, I, like and even if, girl, if, even if women do do it, women are kind of focus on body they women have more of a di- body dysmorphia than men do so the body surgeries and stuff i would understand it more for women but not for men and again this is not me saying that whether finesse two times or kevin gates is a part of the lgbtqia community i'm just saying this conversation is kind of cringe a little bit just a little bit, but you know what? I'm going to skedaddle my way out of this conversation. And you know what? Before somebody say, oh my gosh, she's so homophobic. What is she saying? What did she do? No, 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 no. Someone even here in the comments says, are they flirting in the hood language? So I'm not the only one that's misconstrued in this conversation that they're having, right? It sounds really, you know, let me read some more comments to see um, and I'm reading the shorter ones. So see, someone else is saying Kevin is beyond sus. He's basically out. Somebody says, is they flirting in a hood nigga language? So let me pop myself back up on the screen. I'm not the only one who's who's interpreting this conversation for something more than than just a friendly brotherly conversation because a friendly brotherly conversation is perfectly fine between two men if you guys are bros you guys are bros but legs in the air i can't wait to see your body i don't know it just sounds very flirtatious to me but again we could be wrong right we could be wrong and i'm gonna say we because it's not just me on this one right so no one can just say i'm a oh she's homophobic because again i read the comments and we we have it right there now let's Yo, I try not- on to the shade room and what chance the rapper had to say about black women being underpaid in the entertainment industry. So according to the shade room, chance the rapper weighs in on the conversation about black women being underpaid in the entertainment industry. And let's listen to what chance the rapper had to say. To add my voice to like, I don't know, current pop culture events that doesn't have to do with me. Uh, but there's this current conversation going on right now. A lot of black women, black actresses are coming out and talking about how they was did uh, dirty in the industry, how they weren't paid for their work or, you know, and this has been going on for years. But the the worst part is seeing uh, the comments in a lot of under a lot of these posts with people talking about how they should have negotiated better. Or they should have read their contract and stuff. And these be like the dirtiest, dustiest, brokest, like least goal having definitely least goal accomplishing okay okay so i'm gonna stop you right in your tracks i am going to stop you right in your tracks you were on you were off to oops Hmm. you were off to a really really good start with listening to the issues of the um African-American women in Hollywood and in, in, in the entertainment industry in a whole. Where you lost me at is when you start to criticize the people who put you guys in the seats. Because again, let's get something very straight, Chance the Rapper. If we're talking about the issues that Black women and and black men or black people do have in the industry um, as it relates to their success. It's not white or Caucasian folks really putting you on those big screen TVs. It's the same black scrawny folks that you are now referring to who you claim don't have any dreams, believed enough in your, believed enough in your 
talents, believed enough in your dreams to put you there, to play your rap songs over and over again, to go to the movies and watch your movies, to buy and, and buy into your talent. Because if black people, if all black people decided that, hey, we're not going to, to, um, shit at, at, like we're not going to pay attention to anything that black um artists or black black um talent do in the entertainment industry guess what you wouldn't be there so before you do weigh in on this conversation let's not criticize the very people that put you where you are complaining about right now let's not do that so I will sit here and I will eloquently listen to what it is that you have to say. But when I do hear BS, I'm going to call it out, Chance. I am. So let's go back to you talking bad about us, the regular people who put you guys in the seats as uncomfortable as it may be because of racism. But we support you enough so that you guys, we believe in your dreams enough so that you can be where you are. Right. So let's 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 continue people in the world and they are, they are write some stuff and they've never negotiated a contract they've never had to hire a lawyer and if they did it's we yes we've never had it to do it but we believed in you guys enough to do it right and we believe that when you do get to a certain statue into a certain place that you would be smart enough to not just accept any old thing Right. And then if you did accept any old thing, instead of complaining about any old thing, renegotiate and find a way out. It's all we're saying, because we don't want you guys to experience that we're offering solutions. We're not. Let me let him finish speaking before I do put my foot in my mouth. But when someone is saying like, hey, um, you guys need to read your contracts, you guys need to do this, you guys need to do that. It's there. It's it's when it's like when a girlfriend, a girlfriend and a boyfriend are together, right? The girlfriend comes home and she's complaining about work, complaining about supervisor, complaining, complaining, complaining. All the girl really wants to do is have someone listen to her, but all the boyfriend can do is provide solutions. So yes, we do hear the complaints of Hollywood and Holly Weird doing the things that they are doing to the black community, and we don't like it because we experience racism a lot more than you guys do out here in these streets in corporate America and all of that, right? So when you do go into the industry and you do experience those racism and stuff like that, we want you to not experience it. So we're just providing solutions. So don't criticize us for just kind of still caring about you guys, even though you talked about how scrawny we were and how we've never negotiated a contract. And imagine that we're scrawny, lack dreams, never negotiate, um, negotiate a contract, but you're the one that's you guys are the ones that are stuck in the shitty contracts that you guys are stuck into complaining about that. And again, I'm not speaking to every single person because I spoke I spoke about Taraji P and Gabrielle Union yesterday. So I'm not speaking about those two black women. I'm talking about Chance the Rapper and his negative commentary that he's weighing in on. The way that he, the, the, the approach that he decided to take. And I don't like it. It's like, you not in the color purple. <laughs> like, you not doing nothing and i hate to add any like i hope this doesn't get picked up but yeah yo i try not to the thing is you don't hate to do it because you just did it you didn't hate to do it because you just you just did it it's all i'm saying you you didn't hate to do it because you just do it so um the conversation he was weighing in on was when tsr posted this um article where they said the math ain't math and taraji p henson speaks on pay inequality in emotional video and taraji p henson has been speaking about it and we did speak at length at length about how a miraculous woman and a miraculous talent like taraji p henson isn't getting the recognition that she deserves and it is due to racism and some people do need to just cut her a check and when I do mean cut her a check, I do mean a fat ass check, right? But again, um, Chance the Rapper, the approach that you took with the way that you just did that, it wasn't it wasn't the right one. And stop criticizing the people who put you guys in the seats. And I'm speaking just to Chance the Rapper, not to Taraji or not to anyone else. Um, you need to stop criticizing people who put you guys in the seats that you guys are now Should in. I add my voice to.
no, say don't add your voice into anything. So anyway, let's move on. I don't know what is going on with all these different sexual assault cases because here we go with another one and another one and another one and another one. <sighs> There's one in particular when it comes up, I'm going to tell you that I'm not going to go over it because um, just, just before we do jump into the game, before we do jump into the game real quick, there is a case that is coming up that is including DJ academics. And when it does come up, I was hoping that I would have the strength to listen to the commentary, not just by him, but also by the young lady. But just listening to the young lady alone, it it just didn't sit right with me in my spirit to discuss it yet. I'm not comfortable enough to discuss it yet, so I'm not going to talk about it. So that is something that I am going to skip over when we do get it. So if you're watching it on YouTube, you're going to see me skip through it. But let's talk about this one as it relates to the game because the game case has already been handled, right? And he's just trying to run out of paying her the money, but she's going to get her money either way. So according to the that's for the shade room, sorry. According to the neighborhood talk, the game's sexual assault accuser wins second lawsuit against the rapper. The court put his mansion back in his name, which means he could um which means she can lodge a lien on his property and collect the seven million dollar judgment. So I guess he's been trying to like some certain celebrities have been where they're where they've been legally um advised to put certain things in certain certain people's names do this move money around shake things around shake things around so that if you do get the lawsuit you won't be the one that's liable but this young lady has won the second lawsuit that says hey 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 the game you are going to be li um, liable for this so shout out to her for that for continuing on and collecting her seven million because i know she's coming after it ain't no way she's she's filing a second lawsuit and not coming after her money so good luck to this woman and um hopefully you know moving forward she will be in a better space all right let's move on because again i don't want to spend too much time on those topics <laughs> Now let's look at, for a lot of conversation, for those of you who are on YouTube, Jada Wada is in um, Lagos, Nigeria. Girl, I'm trying to be like you, go to Lagos and have some fun and meet some African men and be like, hey, and talk all this language and learn and all of that, party and have fun. But um, let's look at Jada Wade. And if I do have to mute it for copyright purposes, I will. Um, but let's look at Jada Wade to have fun. That's what I spoke. So yes, that is Jada Wada having fun. She's taking her drinks. Jada Wada is always out here having fun. Always, always. <laughs> yeah, Jada Wada is always out here having fun. And this is just a Jada Wada celebration post. I love the fact that Jada Wada is one of those girlies who she's not necessarily someone that's into the drama. She's not into the mixiness. She's not into the... I'm going to pop off. I'm going to do this. I want to fight. I want to fight. No, she's like, look, I'm here just to have fun. I'm here to live my life. I'm here to travel. I'm going to go to Dubai with my friends. I want to go to different vacation spots with my friends. And I just want to have fun with my friends. And it just has to be girls sometimes. I'm not saying that she doesn't have um, boyfriends or a little baby or whatever, but she's always like kind of just in her corner, minding her business, having fun somewhere. And I think that's why I really do like her. That's, I think that's why I really do like Jada Wada. Like, girl, you just have fun, having fun for both of us. Like, I'm living vicariously through you. So, Erica and Scrappy, they've been, I don't know, I think these two are back together because they've been seen out at the spa date. They've been seen hanging out. Now they're having play dates, right? Where Erica Dixon, according to the neighborhood talk, took her twins to scrappy's house for a play date with his three kids now let's look at this clip yeah they ain't hit turn y'all don't want to go downstairs and play i love 
Hi, Mommy. You do? Come on, Air. <laughs> they better go downstairs. Scrap. Go, go down there with him. I'm about to change the channel. You can stay down here with them. You heard me. I'm about to change the channel upstairs. You, you gonna sit out here with them? You sure? You gonna be able to handle all them? You want me to sit out here? You sure? Okay. He said he got them. Yeah, they ain't get turned. Okay, so, um, girl, I don't know. But I think y'all need y'all a, um, a babysitter. Five kids. The next time we do this, get you a babysitter. Get you a babysitter and allow you and Scrap to kind of just navigate the situation a little bit cooler. Not saying that they don't have babysitters, but the next time you decide to do a play date, just just have a babysitter. Have have one on deck. Um, but here they are having family time. The other day they were at the spa. Now today they having Christmas together, having all five kids together. Girl, this is something. Something, something, something. Something in the water over at Atlanta. Okay, so here is the story with DJ Academics. And I'm going to calmly, calmly, calmly skip over the story. And here is the story with the young lady and her response to what DJ Academics said. Her response is what I scrolled upon. And then when I scrolled upon it, I I just couldn't listen to the full thing. I'm not I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. So maybe um I'll talk about this later on in the week if I do get um emotionally strong enough to talk about the story. I'm just not there yet. All right. So off of that, this is a and you know what? Not off of that. Let me go back just a little bit. The only thing I do want to say about this story, I just hope that whatever truth, whoever truth is the truth, comes to light. And I wish them both all the best, um, especially her, because certain things were done in terms of a kid and all of that. So you know what? Let me get off of it. Let me get off of it. I just wish you all the best, sweetheart, is all I can say. I wish you all the best with this situation all right <sighs> i needed to take a little breath <laughs> breath real quick so let's jump into sweetie okay sweetie looking beautiful this is a sweetie celebration post sweetie is always gorgeous 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 <laughs> And I'm gonna mute the sound because the sound really isn't needed right now. But sweetie looking gorgeous on a boat, showing us the fishes in the water, her glass bag looking beautiful. The dress is beautiful, the body is beautiful, the hair is beautiful, everything. So shout out to Sweetie for just being a beautiful woman who is just in her pretty woman era, right? I don't we we haven't been hearing much music from her. So when she does pop out and she does show us her miraculous beauty and all of that. I feel like it should be celebrated, right? Because she's just popping out just to say, hey, I'm still here. And, you know, it is what it is. Not every time the celebrity pops out, it has to be about music, right? We can't just celebrate the celebrity for who they are. And this is her taking time and investing time and energy into her look. And I feel like the look is looking and I love it. Okay. So according to the shade room, we're moving on to a different story. According to the shade room, Mama Jones, Jim Jones' mama, wishes her man a happy new year. But the thing is, these pictures that they attach, for those of you who are listening to the audio podcast, is her man in jail or something? Because it looked like he is. But let me see what she says. In her, in her wishes to him, she said, Happy New Year's to my man. This our love year we in love and we got this love you all we got this we got this love you all happy new years help us wish each other happy new years
So I'm not sure if these are jail photos, but they look like jail photos. But you know what? All I'm going to say is he, Jim Jones' mama, Mama Jones's man, may allegedly be in jail. I don't know. Based on these photos, they look like, because then where, where would you get this background from, right? So I'm only going off of the background of these photos, and I'm not the only one who think that these photos are jail photos. 9,205 people also think so, where um, a commenter, Saucy underscore 31, says, these look like jail photos, and 9,205 people liked them, which is why I said it. But you know what? Shout out to uh, Mama Jones and her boyfriend. Happy New Year's to you guys as well. Um, we've already spoken about Cardi B in another video, so I won't even, um, talk about Cardi B or even Nikki, because we've spoken about them. Um, let me take a brief intermission where you guys just kind of look at me real quick. For those of you who are watching on YouTube, and I kind of look through the stories and see, what else I kind of want to talk about or if I want to talk about anything else or just kind of end it here. You know what? We're going to jump into, you know what? We'll end it here. We'll end it here. We are at the one hour um, time frame. So we've been here for about an hour and a minute. So we'll end it here. We did discuss some topics about this controversies and the celebrities and what they've been going through and all of that. Um, so yes, let's again, today is January the 1st, 2024. It's going to be like, you know, like when we were like in school and we had to write the date on every single thing that we wrote. And then you'd write, um, Oh three when it's supposed to be Oh four, or you'd write 13 when he's supposed to be writing 14. Well, I'm going to be saying 23 when I'm supposed to be 23 and 24. So if you do say, you say 23 in any of these videos and any of these dates, forgive me from now. And I ask you from the first day of the year. So you can't forget it. You guys cannot forget that I asked you that. All right. So let's close off with the quote of the day. Today's quote of the day is you owe yourself the love that you so freely give to other people. Sometimes it is so easy for us to love others, forgive others, show others compassion, care for them, show up for them. But when it comes to showing up for ourselves, we don't do it. We become judgmental. We, we become self-hating people. We become mean to ourselves. We don't forgive ourselves. So be that compassionate person person that you are to your friend to you this year okay so shout out to you guys and I want to say happy new year hopefully you guys have your resolutions written down you guys have your planners set for the um first second third fourth quarter of the year you guys have your dates and things in line your calendar is up to date however you guys navigate choose to navigate the new year because everyone is different right some people would make um vision boards and stuff like that I need to make my vision board I'm telling you guys to get caught up to speed and I haven't even made my vision board yet. I might make that vision board tonight if I have enough time and energy. But anyway, I said all of that to say that I really do love you guys. And thank you so much for those of you who sat through the entire show. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Enjoy your year 2024. Okay, guys.